Hello my dear YouTuber friends, I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video and today we'll be asking is the Logitech Flight Yacht system still worth buying in 2021? This is of course a follow on video, I'll link it in the top right for you, from the video I did last year when I first got this, was it worth buying in 2020? Since then of course, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 has released, so perhaps now it's a more important question. Is this still worth buying in 2021? Well. Let's find out. So before I go into the pros and cons of the Flight Yolk system, let's first take a trip down memory lane. Last year, when I first bought this, previous to having this, I was just using Holtas joysticks, basically hands-on throttle and stick systems, like the Holtas 4. Now, this is still great in simulators like DCS World Combat Flight Simulators, where basically most aircraft have a sort of Holtas system, a throttle and stick system, and in things like the Airbus, it's still good. Back then, I was still playing Flight Simulator X. And when it came to flying aircraft like the 747, the PMDG, 777, and the Cessna aircraft, I simply wanted to try a yoke system to see if that would add more immersion. And it definitely, definitely did more on that in a moment. Because I didn't know if I would take to a yoke, how much I would enjoy it, I didn't want to spend a lot of money on it. I wanted to spend between 100 and 120 pound. I actually managed to get this in late 2019 for 117 pound, 117 which is quite a good price. Typically on the Logitech website, these retail for about £140, but that £117 was right on the mark. I saw a couple of reviews on this and I thought, yeah, okay, let's try that. That's not too expensive. The only other yoke in that price range is the CH yoke. I'll show you a picture of it. And that has a sort of throttle system on top of the body of the yoke system. I just didn't like the look of it. I preferred to have a set of, a separate throttle quadrant, which is what this comes with. When you buy this, it comes with the yoke and separate throttle quadrant, which plugs into the yoke system. You can buy more of these if you want, and that would plug into USB. But that was right on the money. So if you like me, transitioning from a sort of Holtas or simple joystick and you don't want to spend a lot of money on the yoke, this could be within your price range. If you go one up from this, you're talking about the Honeycomb Alpha Yoke, which a lot of people recommend. If you have the money for it and you know you're going to like it, then yes, I would recommend that flight yoke system. It's going to be at minimum £250 to buy it. And remember, with the Honeycomb, you only get the yoke. You get a few buttons with it as well. You only get the yoke system. You don't get a throttle system. So you would have to buy a throttle quadrant. You can either buy the Honeycomb throttle quadrant, but that's another £250. So you're looking at £500 there. Or you can buy one of these, the USB variant. That's about £60 when they become more available on the Logitech website. But still, if you're looking at £60, that's going to be £310 for a yoke and throttle. I just didn't want to stretch to that kind of money. And it's really up to you. For the price range, especially if you can get it for around that £120 mark, I feel this offers excellent value for money. And of course, if you spent, like I did, 
under £120 on this, you can start expanding into other equipment. You can buy yourself a, a set of rudder pedals, or you can do what I did. So over the past year, I've slowly been expanding my flight equipment. I got myself some 737 replica handles and a Logitech multi-panel. Instead of me providing links for each of these, go and look at my whole playlist, Flight Simulator 2020 Guides and Tutorials. If you're new to the channel, it's very useful, gives you a lot of tips and guides in Flight Simulator 2020. You'll also find the videos on these specific items in there. With the original throttle unit, I didn't like those uh, default knobs it came with. I wanted something more substantial, particularly for the throttle itself. That's why I opted for this. You can buy various kits that go over those levers. This is the one I liked. With the multi-panel, this is fantastic for autopilot settings. You can just simply set your height and heading and press autopilot and away your aircraft goes. Fantastic unit. But you can see the versatility with this. By the way, with all these items, I've spent just under £250. So again, the price advantage comes to the forefront. And going from a simple halter system to a yoke and various different items and objects you can buy with it to increase that immersion. It's incredible in simulators like Flight Simulator 2020, X-Plane, even Flight Simulator X. It's like chalk and cheese going from a halter to a yoke system. Another advantage with this yoke system is the pure number of buttons and controls it comes with. You've got rocker switch here, a rocker switch here up and down. You can use that as flaps or trim. I actually use these rocker switches up and down for trim and left and right sort of roll trim. You've got a button here. You've got another button like this on the back of the yoke system here. I currently use as brakes. You've got a real-time clock here, or a sort of stopwatch uh, feature. Now, there is a purpose for this. I'm going to release a video soon on the purpose of this stopwatch on this particular yoke system. So watch out for that. And you've got the real-time clock again. You've got various buttons on the throttle system that comes, throttle quadrant that comes with this unit. Keep that in mind. So you've got six buttons here. You can set to various... Uh, features and functions in Flight Simulator 2020 or X-Plane. If you pull these levers down, you've got another button. So you can see that that could act perhaps as maybe reverse thrust there. Although I do feel holding a button as hold reverse thrust is possibly your better option. So you can see the versatility of this. So again, the actual uh, amount of buttons and variety of what you can set these up to do is another big advantage for this very fairly reasonably priced yoke system okay so those are the advantages now let's go over a couple of the cons perhaps what people would see as the disadvantages of the flight yoke system now, one of the cons or disadvantages with the flight yacht system, people say, is that it's limited to 45 degrees in the roll. So moving left and right, you can't go past that 45 degrees. With other yokes, I think they did a Cessna Pro yoke variant of this yoke and the Honeycomb, you can go the full way to 90. So that would be vertical that way in the roll. This is limited to 45 degrees. I would say you don't need to worry about this at all. I was a little bit worried before I bought it, but you're not going to get anywhere near that 45 degree roll in flight. In fact, let's show you what happens if you do. So I've got a flight in progress over London. Turn the autopilot off. Let's roll that full 45 degrees. You can see the aircraft just wants to roll over. Not ideal. Let's pitch up there so I don't crash. If I go to the right, do it again. It's just too quick if you go to that 45 degree. I roll off around maybe 20 or 30. So if I want to go left here, let's just get the aircraft steady a bit. 
you only need to turn the yolk slightly there. There's no issue of reaching that 45 degree limit. I've never reached it. I've never even noticed it until I physically turn the yolk out of game and I can feel that limit. But in game, you're not gonna get anywhere near that limit. So there's nothing to worry about with that limit of, let's just put that on autopilot, with that limit of that 45 degrees, you're just not gonna get anywhere near that. Not in Cessna's or yoke controlled aircraft. It's definitely not in something like a 747, nowhere near that limit, so it's not an issue. Another con or disadvantage is the dead zone. And that sort of a detent in the center of the yolk there. If I push forward, you can see it'll spring back to that detent. That was an issue with Flight Simulator X. Look at my original review of this flight yolk system. It was an issue there. With Flight Simulator 2020, it's not an issue at all. I can flare quite nicely by pitching backwards, pulling backwards, pulling towards me rather, or then pushing away from me, I can control the aircraft when it comes to landing very nicely. In fact, with Flight Simulator 2020, I've actually had to add, let's go to sensitivity there, a bit of a dead zone on the pitch because it was a bit too sensitive. That's quite ironic with this yoke. But you're going to have no issues with simulators like Flight Simulator 2020 or indeed X-Plane. Absolutely no issues with that detent and that dead zone just seems to have disappeared with these simulators. So all in all, the cons that people, the actual disadvantages of this yoke, yes, they're there, but you just don't actually notice them when you're flying in a simulator like Flight Simulator 2020. So let's give you my conclusion of the Logitech Flight Yacht system. I definitely still feel it's worth buying in 2021, especially if you don't want to pay a lot for a yoke. You're not sure how you're going to like it, how much you're going to use it. You don't want to spend a lot of money. Get it for around that £120 to £140 price mark. And it's just brilliant. I still love it. There are better yokes. Like I said before, the Honeycomb Alpha, I'll be looking to get that when I get an Xbox, either Series X or S, and Flight Simulator 2020 releases on the consoles, on the Xbox consoles. There's apparently going to be a Honeycomb Alpha sort of specialised yoke for Xbox. I'll probably get it then and do possibly some kind of comparison but for now i just don't feel i need another yoke unit i'm quite happy with this it controls aircraft beautifully in simulators like x-plane and flight simulator 2020 no complaints about it at, at all i'm still enjoying it but listen, those are my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts. Do you have this flight yacht system? Are you enjoying it? Are you not enjoying it? Let me know below. I stay, say it's still worth getting. Don't forget to give a like for the video. Don't forget to leave a like if you've enjoyed the video. Subscribe for more and I'll see you very soon.